Welcome back to the Old Buck Ranch. Today I'm going to uh, be shooting a video. It's kind of a part two video uh, of one that I shot a couple months ago uh, where I was scanning my 35 millimeter film negatives. And ever since then I've been thinking about it, actually a lot longer before that too, about a way to uh, scan and digitize a bunch of 4x5 film negatives that um, I had accumulated back during my college days uh, at Northwestern State University. And, you know, I've done a lot of research and I found several, you know, scanners online that um, reportedly did a pretty good job of scanning medium and large format negatives, but the price was just, you know, it was just uh, more than I really felt I could justify just for this project. So I just kind of kind of put it aside and uh, you know kept thinking about it and everything and you know thought about some other options maybe sending them off and getting them digitized but uh, that was pretty expensive as well. So about a month or two ago I started looking on eBay for used scanners and the scanner that I kind of <clears throat> kind of popped into my mind is is the best option was the um, Epson V700 Perfection and they've, you know, since there, there was a couple of upgrades to that, but, um, you know, that was the one that I kind of figured would be uh, for the best bang for the money. And um, so I started looking online. I actually bid on a few, but again, the prices just went way beyond what I really wanted to pay. So last week, I found one uh, from a seller, and it was just the scanner, and it didn't have a power cord. I uh, didn't have any of the um, film trays or anything. It was just a scanner. And I went back and forth with him, and he assured me that if it didn't work once I got it, that he would, you know, take it back. So I took a chance and made him an offer um, lower than what he was asking. He accepted it, and I got the scanner. And, you know, in the meantime, I had ordered a cable online and um, a 4x5 negative tray. So when it came in this week, you know, plugged it in, I downloaded the free software online from Epson and plugged it in and it works. So, um, you know, long story, but just wanted to kind of set the stage uh, and explain kind of how we got to where we are now. And, you know, these 4x5 negatives that I shot um, back in, you know, the mid to late 80s, um, or just for me they're like treasured possessions you know and some of them were actually really good pictures and some of them weren't that great you know I was uh, studying photography in college and I was learning and you know you take the good with the bad but uh, I just really uh, wanted to digitize these things and get them into the computer and see what I had and I've already been testing a little bit and have discovered that uh, scanning 4x5 negatives with a good scanner I uh, yield some amazing results. So, um, sorry for the long-winded intro, but uh, just wanted to set the stage and and show you, you know, how to do this and what you know, what it's all about. So, uh, hope you enjoy the video. And here we go. Well, here's the Epson Perfection V700 Photo Scanner. It comes uh, equipped with a, basically with two light sources. There's one on the bottom for scanning regular photographs and documents, that sort of thing. But on the top there's another um, piece of glass and another light source that you use to scan film negatives. And it comes with this, this little white insert that covers the glass on top if this is, if you want to scan photos or documents you leave this in as a little slots that it clips into but if you want to scan photographs or negatives I should say you pop that off and uh, you know you'll need the light source from on top and then if you buy this new it comes with a series of these film negative carriers uh, I think it, it does pretty much anything from 35 millimeter all the way up to 4x5 and in between so this one didn't have them and so I got online and ordered one I think it cost about 20 bucks 
and this is for four by five film negatives and it essentially holds two negatives and what you can see here is that it's got these little triangles on the tabs that line up with some holes on the scanner uh, base and you just make sure that you line the little triangles up and then slide it into the holes and it's ready to go um, and then these doors, these little windows flip open and then you insert your negatives in here. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Well, I kept all my old 4x5 negatives in boxes. Uh, I've got hundreds of them. And also, most of the ones that I thought were good, I preserved them in these little mylar sleeves. And I've discovered now, years later, that uh, that was really a good thing to do because the negatives are in really nice shape. Uh, most of them are over 30 years old and they're all black and white but that was really really a smart thing to do uh, to preserve them. It kept them from getting scratched up and it just you know kind of protected them and um, I was really happy with that. So, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm just taking them out and I'm digitizing them and getting them into the computer and at some point you know, I'll just start playing around with them and, you know, processing them and posting some online, that sort of thing. But it's, it's really cool. So I've been having a good time doing this. Okay, I hope you can see this. Basically, I'm just pulling them out of the sleeve. And you really can't see that. It's, this one's pretty dense but it just slips into the uh, tray. There's like little slots that it fits in so that you know you've got it in there right. You just close up the little dids. Alrighty, and then you shut the top, and then you, uh, you know, go back to the computer and open up the software and hit scan. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is when you load the film onto the scanner, you want to make sure that you load the emulsion side down. And essentially, what that means is that the on a negative you've got a shiny side and then you've got a kind of a flat dull side. The flat dull side is the emulsion, that's where the actual uh, image is and so that needs to go down against the glass. So, all right, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the software uh, because you know there's tons of different scanner softwares out there and you know it really is just a matter of preference. I, as I mentioned in the intro I downloaded the uh, Epson Perfection V700 scanner software and drivers free online and so that's what I've been using. It seems to work pretty well and I'm, I'm really have no complaints at this point. But basically what you want to do is you bring up your interface and what I do is I have been using the professional mode <coughs> and what it'll do is it'll ask you you know what type of document and what I've selected is film with film holder okay and then your film type is black and white negative film 16-bit grayscale image and then I the, I think the default resolution is 300 and I bumped it up to 600 dpi so um, you know, for you it's a matter of preference there as well and um, it'll make a difference as far as how quickly the image gets scanned depending on how powerful your computer is but I wanted a little extra resolution for these negatives so that's what I chose and over here you've got a series of um, boxes you can select you've got um, unsharp mask which I've selected grain reduction color restoration backlight correction dust removal and then digital ice technology I'm going to select dust removal and what I found is that works pretty well. The digital ice technology button 
I don't recommend that you select that if you're scanning large volumes of negatives because uh, it's some sort of proprietary um, protocol from Epson and it goes in and it cleans up your negatives and you know uh, sharpens and does a lot of other things but it takes it could take up to 10 minutes to scan one negative and I don't really want to deal with that so I don't select that and I just click on the dust removal button and that seems to work pretty well and then I hit preview uh, initially when you start it's going to ask you to hit preview and that way you kind of get an idea of what the scan is going to look like before you uh, hit the final scan button so uh, it takes you know less than a minute to do a preview uh, which is kind of nice Okay, one of the neat things about this scanner, and if you select the professional mode and then film with film holders, it actually will scan each negative separately on the first pass, which is very cool. Now, there is one little bit of a quirk here that I discovered last night. You know, when the preview comes up, not only is it, you know, the wrong orientation, which is easily fixed here, you know, just flip it, but it's also... Um, backwards so you would have to flip each one uh, the opposite way to get the right orientation it's not a big deal but it's just something something to keep in mind when you're scanning your negatives and then uh, you know once you're satisfied with what you've got I mean there's a couple of other things over here that you can adjust the uh, levels and the you know the contrast and the lighting and all of that but I'm not going to mess with that because my intent is to get this into Lightroom or Photoshop, and that's where I'm going to do my editing. So at this point, I just want to hit scan, and I'm just about done. Now, I've already created a folder here that I want these scan images to go into. So I just hit OK, and here we go. All right, and what I've told it to do is after it finishes the scan for it to automatically open my folder where the images are stored, uh, which is kind of cool. And so now I can just click on the uh, image and bring it up and there it is. And that's really a nice, nice image. Now the, this image is dark now, but I'm going to be able to take it into you know, Lightroom and um, clean it up and, and you know fix it but it's really impressive how much resolution you can get out of a, a 4x5 negative it's just it's stunning really so but uh, anyway um, that's how the scanner works and how you scan you know large format negatives and so I'm gonna spend a few minutes just kinda showing you how I take the images into Lightroom and how I clean them up and you know edit them the way I want them to be for the final project so here we go okay well hopefully you can see this um, got the image that I just scanned loaded into Lightroom and what I'm going to do first is crop it and straighten it a little bit because it's a little bit off kilter and you can you know choose whatever you want. I think I'm going to scan these or crop these as a four by five, since that's what the negative size was. And basically, I'm just going to you know crop it so that the edges are clean, and then I'm going to try to use the grid lines to kind of line it up and rotate it the way I want. Make sure it's nice and straight. You're always going to have some perspective issues depending on what size of lens you use, that sort of thing, and that's the same here. But overall, that looks pretty good. So, okay. And I may or may not crop it more later, but 
Now I'm going to do a little bit of editing and what I've done since I've been playing around with this is um, I've created some presets that um, kind of will get me where I want to be. You know, I've already tweaked some of the settings and uh, we'll see how that goes. So just want to pick the right one. Okay. I think I kind of like that. I'm still going to do a little bit of tweaking. I'll use the tone curve tool to kind of tweak it a little bit. Now I'll go up here and play around with the exposure a little bit. Contrast. That looks nice. So, you know, that's basically kind of where I want to be, and I'll probably play around with it more later, but I just wanted to show you for the sake of the video. Um, you know how to scan these images and how to get them into the computer and then how to use Lightroom or some other program to edit them. And as I've said earlier, it's just really staggering to me how nice and clean these images are, even when you blow them up. Um, I mean, this is just, I just can't believe it. I'm really pleased with uh, the results that I'm seeing so far and again it's going to give you what you had to start with and fortunately these uh, negatives were nicely sharp in focus and were lit fairly well um, so it's just it's really cool and one of the other things this project has inspired me to do is I'm going to break out my 4x5 view camera at some point and I'm going to start using it again because it's not that hard to you know, develop the negatives at home and then play around with them. And uh, I haven't used the camera in probably 30 years or more, but um, I'm kind of excited about that as well. So that's pretty neat. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's pretty straightforward, and, it, you know, as I said earlier, the results are just amazing. And, you know, again, I'm going to, you know, start using my old 4x5 view camera that I used in college back in the 80s. And uh, I'll take some more video later and show you what that's all about. But for now, I just wanted to wrap things up and, you know, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. So we'll see you then.